just a little taste of the emotion of the World Baseball Classic and you can feel it here even in the early hours of the morning in Miami as we start Pool D with our first game from Lone Depot Park. It's Nicaragua and Puerto Rico de Fleming Yonder Alonso great to have you with us Puerto Rico has taken the field and we are almost ready to go. The players are ready. The coaches are ready and we definitely know the fans are the fans have showed up in big numbers with a lot of energy starting lineup for Nicaragua and a few names you might recognize from some time in big league baseball a lot of players who are younger this is Nicaragua's first appearance in the World Baseball Classic their catcher Melvin Navoa played very well in the WBC qualifiers and he's turned into one of the leaders of this team some interesting comments about their exhibition games here in Florida in the Grapefruit League leading into this WBC. Yep. I think he's feeling like his team gained some confidence those days. Well, not only that, but Dave, I like that he's hitting fifth. Fifth is usually the RBI spot. That's more the where you need to protect Chesler as much as you want to go ahead and drive in those key runs. But he talked about this. He said, hey, when we face the Mets, when we face the Cardinals, he gave us that boost. He gave us that confidence to be able to go and and do our thing here in this round. And the pitcher they'll face starting game one for Puerto Rico, a pitcher who pitched for Team USA in the last WBC. Now his mom's home country, Puerto Rico, Marcus Stroman. Yeah, Marcus Stroman, you know, this is a guy that, that he's going to be all arms and legs in action, and we'll take a look at his arsenal and what he's doing. This is a guy that throws everything. It's sinker, slider, it's cutter, it's changeup, it's splitter, it's four seams. I mean, whatever he's got to get you out, it's going to be working for that day. But one thing I, I noticed about Marcus Stroman is he's going to try to get early swings. If he can get early swings, that means he's going to be able to go later into the game, and they definitely need that if they want to reserve their bullpen. And of course, there are pitch count rules, mandatory rest rules in the WBC. So we'll be talking about those as we go along. Marcus Stroman, though, you're right. When he's right, he can get outs quickly. Sandor Guido, the manager of Nicaragua, very proud of the fact that his team has made it here. It's a baseball proud country, just without the history, say, of Yadier Molina's team. Yadi, he's managing this team for the first. He just retired as a player. He needed a new job. You know, he was throwing batting practice, and, and it felt like he was throwing as hard as he would throw to, to second base. So he, he looks like he's ready to roll, too. I guarantee you there's some butterflies for oh, Yadi Molina. <laughs> so here we go. And Pool D expected to be ultra competitive. And Nicaragua, I, I think you would definitely consider them the underdog team in this powerhouse group. And the first pitch from Marcus Stroman is in there for a called strike. And we are underway. Yeah, you're going to know something right away, Dave. His first two batters, does he have his fastball location? If he's got that fastball location, then he can start working with his breaking balls off of that. Juan Diego Montes, the center fielder for Nicaragua, takes it outside for a ball. This is the thing about Marcus Stroman, even facing him throughout my years, you're never going to see the same pitch back to back times. He's always going to fool you and, and, and work your eyes. Off the outside. Count is two and one. Juan Diego's been working on the mustache, I think, to get ready for the start of the WBC. On the ground up the middle. That's the great shortstop Francisco Lindor, who throws out Montez, who's got good speed for out number one. Overall, the defense for Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, I think they feel like it should be a strength of this team. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, look, everybody here came up as a shortstop. Obviously, we know Francisco Lindor will be that guy, but what I really like is Martin Maldonado behind the plate. This is a guy who has experience, a guy who can do it all, and when he talk, when you talk about taking care of a staff, Martin Maldonado is that leader on that clubhouse. Now you could argue, I mean, JT Real Muto is a great defensive catcher. You could argue, though, the best defensive catcher in the world right now, Martin Maldonado. Martin Machete Maldonado means absolute rocket for an arm. He's always been able to catch. This is a guy that's developed his game since the days in Milwaukee with the Brewers. So another right-handed hit of the shortstop for Nicaragua, Brandon Leighton. And he takes that pitch for ball two. It's 2-0. Two and oh. Situation right here. If I'm Brandon, I, I want to take advantage, but I want to make sure I get a good strike. This is going to be not just a, a, a 92 minor right down the middle. This is going to be a, a little cutter right there. 2 1. 
Let me see if he got that aggressiveness going. Uh, this 2-1 count, usually more than not, he likes to spin off of that, too. He likes to either go in or go soft down and away again. Marcus Stroman, who naturally works with a quick tempo, on the ground just foul by first. So from 2-0, two it's 2-2. Two and two. We are not playing with the new MLB pitch clock rules in this World Baseball Classic. That's something we'll talk about a lot as the tournament goes on. But I do think many of the pitchers who are going to be big leaguers this year are going to pitch with that kind of tempo here in this event. If there's one pitcher that is not going to, to really hurt, it's this guy right here, Marcus Stroman. This is the guy that usually works fast. A guy like, like likes to get you off your rhythm, and the reason he does that is to kind of work all his pitches throughout the zone. This is a guy that's going to be working top of the zone, lower of the zone, the corners, and more than not, with these next two or three hitters, you're going to see if he's got the right stuff for today's game. Here's Stroman's 2-2 pitch, and it's hit foul again. Well, Latone's 24 years old, part of the Reds organization, originally signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks. This is a put away pitch right here. More than not, this 2-2 count, this pitch right here will determine what he's going to do with runners on base. So anybody on base, this is what Marcus Stroman really likes to put people away with. That one flipped out toward right center field. And coming together, it's Kike Hernandez, who cuts just in front of Melendez and makes a catch two down. Hybrid Kike, he can play them all. He can play shortstop, he can catch, he can pitch, he can play center. Really good communication right at the last second right there. This is what happens when you haven't played with guys all year round. You've only had a couple weeks to play with guys, and sure enough, those are athletes right there in the backside. I think you do worry about that a little bit. The, the communication, the familiarity. MJ Melendez is not a real natural outfielder either. He's been a catcher for most of his professional career, but they avoided a collision, yeah, they, made the catch, two down. And for the first time, they're playing now in a four deck stadium, right? They haven't played in a four deck stadium since last year, since these guys played in the big leagues last year. So this could be a little bit of an adjustment the first two or three innings. Billy Vasquez, left handed hitter, two down, nobody on. Just getting started here. Nicaragua, Puerto Rico, first game in Pool D in Miami. We have another game later this evening in this same ballpark in Pool D. That's the Dominican Republic and Venezuela. What a what a first round matchup that is. Put on your seatbelt. First game matchup. A little bit low for ball two. I think of this a situation where Marcus Strozman he, he wants to put this hitter away right now. 15 pitches in the first inning it, it is not ideal. He wanted to kind of finish that inning with 10 to 12 pitches. Broken bat, grounder the barrel of the bat went right past the face of Stroman. Javi Baez throws out Vasquez and Stroman retires the side in order. Puerto Rico coming up when we come back. All right, no score here in Miami. Puerto Rico comes up in the bottom of the first inning. Francisco Lindor, we highlighted him. He's going to hit leadoff for this team. One of the great players in the world. The shortstop, Kike Hernandez, MJ Melendez, good young hitter. Manuel Rivera kind of had a breakout year in the big leagues last year. Javi Baez, Yonder talked to him. He thinks this is going to be a bounce back here. Soto, Rosario, Vasquez, and Martin Maldonado rounding out a very experienced lineup for Puerto Rico. Not a ton of experience on the mound for Nicaragua. Not a whole lot, but you know what? I, I think this is a guy who going to be prepared in Carlos Rodriguez, a really good fastball. A guy who is a prospect yeah. in the Milwaukee Brewers organization, and he throws yeah. strike one. Good fastball, good changeup. He can throw that changeup whenever he wants, and I think for me, that good curveball cutter that he's been working on in the offseason is going to be pivotal for today's game. As you see that changeup right there. And that was ruled a swing for Lindor. It's 0-2. And, and I think when you talk about the breakdown, he's got to win the 1-1 counts, change up at any given moment like we saw there on that 0-1. And he likes that little cutter that we talked about, which is that one right there. But more than not, he's going to pitch to all quadrants. He's going to make sure he elevates the ball, keeps hitters a little bit uncomfortable, and use that change up when needed. And you know that he is feeling the adrenaline of this moment. This is the biggest stage he's ever been on. Against one of the greatest players in the world. Now, time 
called. Lindor got a little impatient. What happens when you have a really good changeup and you see it early in the at bat? Now you're starting to guess yourself with two strikes. You want to put the ball in play, and just make contact. On the ground, toward the middle, and through. So Lindor starts off the World Baseball Classic with a hit. <laughs> hey, the nature of this tournament is every game matters, every at bat matters. You don't get a lot of chances to play in the WBC. And in this group, very important for these powerhouse kind of teams to take advantage of the games where they're the heavy favorite. Absolutely, Dave. You, you, you know, you talk about every pitch matters in the postseason. Or in the World Baseball Classic, every moment matters. Lindor is full of emotion and energy, one of the real leaders of this team. At first base with good speed. Ball one to Kike Hernandez. Earlier, Yadier Molina was talking about playing small ball, being able to do all the little things, running guys over, hit and runs, running from first to third on base hits. Lindor likes to run, especially with, with hitter situations, a 2-1 count, a 1-0 count. He, if he feels like the pitcher is just trying to locate a good pitch and trying to get a strike, he'll take advantage and, and peek over and take off. 2-0 to Kike. Pulled on the ground, foul. It's 2-1. Be a real challenge for the young pitcher and his catcher Novoa. Oh. Kike Hernandez, who you, you, you talked about his versatility, he can play on the infield, has turned into a really good defensive center fielder. That's where he's playing for Puerto Rico. Very high, three and one. A little rush right there. When we talk about situations in 3 1, this is a situation for Lindor to take off. And if you're Kike as the hitter, you want to make sure you swing at a strike. If, if it's a ball, you take ball four. If it's a strike, you protect the runner. Early on in the game, we'll see how aggressive Puerto Rico is. Lindor not going anywhere. It's ball four. So Kike draws the walk. Puerto Rico's got two on and nobody out. And defensively for Nicaragua. Valle Montez Bermudez in the outfield. Eton, the shortstop. Alex Blandino, who, who's got some major league experience playing second base. Navoa doing the catching. 39 year old Willie Vasquez is the first baseman. The, the player who's got the most big league experience, at least in the position player group, Colbert. Chesley Colbert over at third. Yeah, he's got to be the one. Look, he's a guy who's got a ring, too. So he won his ring in 2015 with the Kansas City Royals, but. I really like this visit by the Paolo. This is a moment to, hey, youngster, calm down a little bit. Let's minimize the control here. If we get a double play, we're still in it. You've only thrown nine pitches. Let's try to minimize as much as we can. Yadi's brother, Jose, one of the three catching Molina brothers, the first base coach for Puerto Rico. Hey, Puerto Ricans got some catchers, huh? Uh, incredible history of catching on this active team and over the, the history of the sport. How about MJ Melendez hitting third in this lineup? Tells you what they think about his hitting ability. Left handed hitter takes ball one. Yeah, and talking to him throughout the offseason, he's worked a little bit on his lower half, kind of going with a smaller, smoother leg kick, trying to stay on his backside a little bit. Well, a good change of 1 0 here will be dandy for Carlos Rodriguez. Melendez out to center field. Pretty well hit. Montez back on the track to make the catch. Lindor will tag and go to third. Now number one. Nice little baby cutter right there. And Melendez just didn't try to do too much. Understanding the field, understanding what was needed early on in this game. Getting a good pitch to hit, using the whole field, going up the middle. Now you're now you're working for your teammates right now you got first and third one out and you can do some damage right now if you're Emmanuel Rivera Rivera, the cleanup hitter for Puerto Rico spent time with both Kansas City and Arizona last year when he went to the Diamondbacks he sort of took off offensively great chance for Puerto Rico to take the lead first and third one out on the ground towards second. That could be two. There's one, and the throw is wide of first. 
And that will allow the run to score. So it could have been an inning ending double play. Instead, is just the one out, and it's one nothing Puerto Rico. It was tailor made. Carlos Rodriguez did his pitch, made his pitch, got the ground ball. You can see Lindor right there talking to Soto, trying to tell him what was going on, but got his pitch. All he needed to do was play catch. Wasn't able to do that. When you're giving good teams like this, powerhouses like this, extra outs, momentum favors the bigger team. So Alex Blandino with the, the throw that pulled his first baseman off the bag. That allows Puerto Rico to score the first run of the game. Now Javi Baez, his first at bat. And a good breaking ball <laughs> in for a strike. He was ready to ambush him. If he would have thrown him a first pitch heater, he was ready. This could have been a 3 0 game. Last year offensively, by his standards, a real down year. He swings and misses his own two. Like the determination right here by Carlos Rodriguez after understanding he couldn't get that double play. Going back to work, not by his old two right here. Two strike pitch just off the outside at 95 miles an hour. Young Carlos Rodriguez, he's got some stuff. Yeah, he's got some really good stuff. He's, he, he's showing a lot right now. He's got a good fastball. Maybe a little off with command early on in the game, a little overthrowing, but has thrown some good changeups and some good sliders. Still ahead, one, two. Baez goes down swinging. He chased one there. And you got to give Carlos Rodriguez some credit. Got out of it. The mistake only cost Nicaragua the one run. We go to inning number two. It's one nothing, Puerto Rico. Uh, it's such a big deal that Nicaragua gets to play in the World Baseball Classic for the first time. A country with a population over 6 million people. Managua, the biggest city and the capital city. 19 active volcanoes hmm. in Nicaragua. Did you know that? I did not. Now I do. Thanks for <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nicaragua is sort of... Think about Nicaragua, though. Uh, what? The, the brown rice, the black beans, and the three fried eggs that go on top with a little taco kind of make it like a little soft taco burrito have that with some sauteed onions you got yourself a meal that's the specialty that's the specialty there I mean I'm just yeah you know. are we going to go through every country and get the, the I, we can I think we should <laughs> Stroman misses outside to Chesler Colbert third baseman you said it he's got a World Series ring one of the most accomplished players in the history of Nicaragua. Among the most games played of any player from that country, a slider on the outside. Yep. It's two and two. Marvin Bernard leads the way, 891 games played. His son is on Team Nicaragua for this World Baseball Classic. Everett Cabrera, former teammate. Boy, what a good kid. Great teammate. He's a good player. Two good two player. outside. All star played together in San Diego. Shortstop, a guy who, who absolutely played, leadoff guy, switch hitter, absolute stud. On the ground up the middle. And all the range oh. there. What a play by Baez to spirit spin around and throw him out. Wow. Do you think Marcus Stroman is excited about the magician El Mago? Have your Baez. Well, that first step he took to his right, understanding the direction he was going. Backhanded, look how he looks it all the way through. Now it's just play, play a little catch, like you're in a backyard. What a play, what a play. Marcus Stroman just absolutely loved it. Maybe that's why he decided to pitch for Puerto Rico. Boy, he's got the flair, doesn't he? He really does. Great play, one out here in the top of the second. He's got the matching glove with the matching shoes from Marcus Stroman. He got the bling by, by Baez. I mean, it's Puerto, Puerto Rico at his finest right here. Well, the Navoa, the catcher, swings away. It's one and one. Now he's the guy we were talking about was almost like the spokesman for the team after those exhibition games 
here in the state of Florida against a couple big league teams where Nicaragua built some confidence for this tournament. Slow chopper toward third. Charging. That's Rivera. And he got it. Good play. Took his time, understood who was running. A backstop behind the plate. That was hit the hitter. Rivera made that look very easy. Well, the, the, the thing about Marcus Stroman is he did pitch in the World Baseball Classic in 2017. He pitched for a different team, Team USA, and he was great. In fact, he was the tournament MVP, and a big reason why he was was pitching against Puerto yep. Rico in the championship game, six shutout innings. Yeah, and you wonder why he was named the tournament MVP? Right down there in the K's to, to walk ratio, nine to two in three games. You only want three guys. He, he's going to pitch, and he understands in tournaments like these, he needs contact to be able to produce. On the ground is short. There's some contact, and it's not bad when he got the defense that he has behind him. A beautiful defensive inning for Puerto Rico. Lindor makes that play. Puerto Rico's got the one nothing lead. Well, the manager for Puerto Rico, Yadier Molina, great catcher with an incredible resume. I believe one day he will be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, if he's not a first run, he's got to be a first ballot, I would think. Ten time All Star, nine gold gloves, four times he was the Platinum Glove Award winner. He played in the World Baseball Classic for Puerto Rico twice, both of those years. Puerto Rico finished as the runner up. So some unfinished business for this team with a brand new manager. First time I get to the big leagues, first week in the big leagues, my idol was Yadier Molina. Got to the plate on a pinch hit, asked him in the eighth inning, hey, can I have a mat, uh, 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 one of your gloves? Sends it over that night, sign, game used glove, have it in my house. Wow. First game. First game. Well, you weren't shy. I had to. I didn't know when I was going to have another chance. <laughs> Eftali, yeah, it turned out you had a lot more chances. Yes. Yeah. Eftali Soto swings and misses here. Bottom of the second, Puerto Rico has a 1 0 lead. I think young Carlos Rodriguez, though, acquitted himself pretty well in that first inning. That one gets through, past the reach of the shortstop, Leyton. Well, that's the second hit for Puerto Rico. Soto is aboard. Neftali Soto, one of the first guys I ever met with the Cincinnati Reds as a prospect. He was uh, my teammate in high A baseball. A guy who's always been a pure hitter, a shortstop, a third baseman, then a first baseman, but always has had a bat. Doing big things in, in Japan. This is a big, big inning for Carlos Rodriguez. Just like we saw Stroman just throw 10 pitches in that second inning. Carlos Rodriguez needs to shorten up this inning and hopefully not throw as many pitches. Here's Eddie Rosario. He pulls one on the ground to second. Blandino, nice feed for one, and they got him double play. Oh, Taylor made. That's exactly, that's exactly what Carlos Rodriguez ordered, huh? Get a ground ball, double play. Now we're going from a possible big inning to two outs in the second. Taylor made. Carlos loved it. So that was well turned after Nicaragua could not turn the double play in the first inning. That allowed the run to score. Breaking ball. And just off the outside. Mike Estabrook is our home plate umpire for this game in Pool D. Christian Vasquez, the designated hitter. And he takes That's a strike. It's a good changeup right there. Wouldn't be surprised if he wants to double up with that 1 1, especially these counts. 1 1 counts, you got to throw your best pitch. You don't want to fall 2 1, make it a fastball hitter friendly count. You want to go right to it. Little slider piece, quick pitch him a little bit. Now he's feeling himself. This is a situation right now where, where he's got him. He quick pitched him, he slow pitched him. Pretty big inning, important inning for Carlos Rodriguez. Chance to finish it off right here, 1 2. Vasquez started, but he did hold up. It's two and two. More and more now we're seeing Latin pitchers kind of pitch like that Johnny Cueto. Got a little bit of a, a you got different irons in your bag, I would say. You got the quick pitch iron, you got the, the long pause iron, you got the smooth iron that you need to hit a hybrid with right into the fairway. That's what Carlos Rodriguez is doing right now on that mound.
steps off. So he's not getting the pitch he wants here. I, I like think he that. wants that changeup. He's going to throw him that best pitch he threw him. Going through them all. Freeze him. 2 2. Ooh. Got it. 94 miles an hour. He throws him. Rodriguez gives up the hit. They turn the double play. We go to the third. It's a tradition for Team Puerto Rico to dye the hair, and they've done it again here in 2023. Team Rubio. <laughs> Everybody participates. So that's the look this year. It harkens back to the last time that Puerto Rico played in the World Baseball Classic. Alex Blandino, first pitch swinging, drives one to center field, hit it pretty well. Hernandez back sprinting oh. back to make the catch. Oh. Now number one. In 2017, everybody got into the act. And it served them well. They made it all the way to the championship game, fell to the United States. Angel Pagan was looking pretty good with that dyed blonde. One of your guys, Dave. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, this year, even the folks who aren't a part of the team, who are just around the team, the folks who cover the team from Puerto Rico have gotten into the, the tradition. It's all about the team. If you get to, to, to the finals, now you need the, the media to get to the finals <laughs> as well. So might as well. I'm seeing some blonde wigs by the fans. I, this is an atmosphere like none, none other. That's that's platinum blonde right there. It's got to hurt. <laughs> two, two and on the count. To Sandy Bermudez. And that one's outside for ball. Three. There we go. I need one of those. I mean, I I, I want to say I have good palo. I like to say good hair. You know, one of those for the day. Why not? That's there a, we go. It's a lot easier than going through the whole die job. There's a strike <laughs> from Stroman. He's pitching well and pitching efficiently so far. Yeah. Really like what he's done, especially in the later innings. He's gotten, what, seven outs, five rounders. And you want to talk about this defense. Your, 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 your biggest MO, your, your kind of, the, the, what you want is to get ground balls. Use that infield for Puerto Rico. He's done that. And the ground is short. Lindor, two down. Make it seven. Well, that's classic Marcus Stroman. When he's right, he's getting as many ground balls as just about any pitcher in the big leagues. For the most part, that's when I faced him, it was the most uncomfortable 0 for 4 or the easiest 0 for 4 you can take because you didn't know. You felt like you were right on his pitches and then you weren't. Next thing you know, you were looking up in the eighth inning, you're 0 for 4. You got two broken bats and, and probably a bloop somewhere to left field that was caught. So he's an uncomfortable at bat, but he's a guy that's an absolute workhorse. And he'll challenge you at times given. Orlando Valle, the ninth place hitter for Nicaragua, takes one off the outside. Puerto Rico got a run in the first. With some help, Nicaragua couldn't turn a double play. So that's the difference in the game right now. Valle, left handed hitter. 2 0. Situation later on, especially right now in the back end of this order, wanting to see if they're aggressive. If the Nicaraguan's offense is aggressive, he can use Stroman will use that to beat him, especially in the later on in, the, in this game, getting into that media of the Nicaraguan offense. Kind of feeling his way through this third inning. He's falling behind two hitters in a row. We will see shifting in the World Baseball Classic because the, the, the no shift rules are not in play in this tournament like they will be in the major leagues once the regular season starts. Oh, yeah. That's a strike on the inside, three and one. Team Israel, we won't see them today. They're in Pool D, a team that had a nice World Baseball Classic in 2017. They've done a huge amount of prep work in order to, to use those shifts to their advantage. A lot of defensive scouting report. Three and two. Ian Kinsler, the manager. Huh. And look, the, the rule changes are going to be a big part of the story of the major league season. Pitch timer, larger bases, maybe enhance some base stealing, defensive shift restrictions. Those are not in play for this World Baseball Classic. From three and oh to three and two. 
On the ground to second. Baez will just flip to first, and Marcus Stroman has another one, two, three in. He's retired nine in a row to start this game. Middle of the third, one nothing, Puerto Rico. Well, two games today starting Pool D here in Miami, and our next game will start at 7 Eastern. Yonder and I will be here for it, and what a matchup, Dominican Republic and Venezuela. First pitch here from Rodriguez as we go to the bottom of the third, 1-0 Puerto Rico, and one pitch and one out as Maldonado grounds out. So you, you have to be impressed with young Carlos Rodriguez, who has never pitched in the major leagues. This is his biggest stage by far. In his young career, and he's throwing the ball really well. The later on Carlos Rodriguez is getting quick outs like this, the later on he's moving into this game, the more confidence he's going to have. The first inning he was throwing, overthrowing a little bit. Now all of a sudden he's feeling like, okay, I can do this. I, I, I can get these guys out. I can make pitches. I can move their feet. So anytime you have a guy like this that understands who he is, understands he's a big prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers, understands that I w one day I'm going to be in this big stage, why not start today? Francisco Lindor, oh. good changeup, strike one. He quick pitched him to a changeup. The absolute denominator for a lefty. I always would say as a lefty, the best pitch in the game is a guy that has a really good changeup. After that, it's good luck. The door went after it again. It's one and two. I would say there's never been a, a time in the history of the game where more pitchers are throwing changeups and really good changeups. Well, he, he's kind of that old school pitcher, right? Where he's got a good changeup, he's got a really good fastball. I mean, he can go anywhere here. He can go up the ladder with a fastball at 95, try to freeze him with a backdoor cutter or even a front door quarter. Or, like they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Might as well keep throwing him the changeup down and away to see if he, if he bites again. Anywhere he can go here. The one two and he hit him. He threw a curveball and he hit him. You saw him waiting for his catcher to go through just about every side. He wanted to throw that curveball. The young pitcher right here kind of looking for, for changing of eyes giving him a little bit more spin. Lindor will take that be very happy to walk to first base. So one out base runner. We'll see if Lindor this time maybe considers trying to steal a bag. Kike Hernandez walked his first time up. He goes after the first pitch here and pops it up. Behind second. Blandino. Two down. Just a, a really good so far inning right here. Has made just one mistake with Lindor. But other than that. Three batters, two of those guys have swung on the first pitch. That lets me know that these hitters are getting a little bit angsty, or they don't want to go deeper into the, into the at bat against against Carlos because they're seeing that he's got really good secondary stuff. Melendez hit a ball to fairly deep center field in his first at bat. It set up the only run of the game. Two down, and he oh. takes a strike right there. It wasn't so necessarily a change of more was a, a, a what they like to call a BP fastball. No, he's got 95, 94 in the tank, but this is more of a let me see if I can use that shift to my advantage. 21. First 11 hitters of this game for young Carlos Rodriguez. Four first pitch outs mm. out of 11 hitters. More than not, that just tells me that this guy's got some good stuff, especially right here. You want to win these 1 1 counts. Just off the outside, it's 2 and 1. Got good bite though on that changeup, doesn't he? Always felt like a hitter after seeing that 1 1 changeup. 2 1 usually is, a, is another changeup coming. This does have 95 in the tank, so it's a lot different to, to kind of see. Well, he threw another changeup, and that one was skied way up there. It'll be Blandino again coming into foul ground to make the catch. Another strong inning for Carlos Rodriguez. Gets through some great hitters. We go to the fourth, 1 0 Puerto Rico. Well, I don't think there's any question the most famous player ever to come from Nicaragua, El Presidente Dennis Martinez, who for a long time held the record of most wins by any Latin American pitcher. Bartolo Colon has passed him just by two, but some of the great names in the history of the game there. 
Dennis Martinez, who sparked so much interest in that country of Nicaragua with his baseball success. I met her one time, Little League Baseball here in Miami. Levon Hernandez, Dennis Martinez came, came to a Little League field. Everybody was soaring for Levon Hernandez. That was the year that they oh. won the World Series here in Miami. My dad grabs me by the hand. He says, sir, you're going to meet our, the greatest Latin pitcher right now in our game, El Presidente, Dennis Martinez. I was able to give him my hat. He, he, he was able to sign it for me. He still had it. Big chopper and over the head of Rivera, the third baseman. So Nicaragua is going to get its first hit of this World Baseball Classic. It's their leadoff hitter, Juan Diego Montes. And gets the Nicaraguan fans going. Memories of Dennis Martinez. Your dad was no dummy. He knew Dennis Martinez. Knew. July of 1991. A perfect game at Dodger Stadium in L.A. against a really good Dodgers team. An unforgettable moment. One of the great moments in the history of the Montreal Expos franchise. A gentleman, a great teammate, even better person. But boy, when he took that mound, it was uh, no mercy. Strike one to Brandon Leighton, shortstop. So a base runner, not just the first hit, first base runner for Nicaragua. And they are hanging in this game. Puerto yeah. Rico, big favorite in this early matchup in Pool D. Now it's on two. Stroman got him to chase. If you let a weaker team hang on later parts in the game, it, it, the advantages kind of get a little bit more even. This will be a good test for Marcus Stroman right here. First time with people on base, we'll see how he reacts. And you pointed out maybe the strength of the Nicaraguan team is their bullpen. And they got fuel coming their way. 0-2. Oh, Off the outside. It's so tough with Maldonado behind the plate. Running game's off. Uh, Nicaragua <laughs> wants to use the running game. They do. They feel like the strength of their offense is small ball, manufacturing runs. But he negates a lot of that. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a, you know, you can go 0 for 4, but you can do so many things defensively. That one popped up into shallow right. Baez making the call, going back from second, one away. That's the one thing about Maldonado is, you know, whatever he does with the bat is great. What he does on defense is it, it's like saving runs and creating runs because he's creating runs for your offense to keep in the game tight and leaving that runner just at first base. I mean, he hasn't even taken a, a fair enough lead to attempt to go because he understands that with Marcus Stroman being really fast to home plate, having a guy like Maldonado, it's pretty much a, a, a no-win situation for the Nick Rockwoods. We saw it in the World Series. I mean, Martin Maldonado did not have a very good year offensively last year, but Dusty Baker rode in the whole way yeah. because... With with having Christian Vasquez there as well, he still couldn't, couldn't sit him. It was. It was a little frustrating for Christian Vasquez, now his teammate in the World Baseball Classic. Yep. Great catcher in his own right, but Maldonado just has the trust of everybody in Houston. There's talk Vasquez. To talked to Maldonado yesterday. He's lost about 25 pounds. Oh, looks great. Feels great. His knees feel amazing. There goes the runner from first. Here's the throw. The tag. Got him at second. Oh, Machete! Machete! Maldonado! You play with fire. More than not, you're going to get burnt. Pretty good lead. Pretty good run right there. Pretty good start. Martin Maldonado, though. Great tag by Lindor. No look throw right here. Whew. Oh, my. Nicaragua was asking for a minute to check in their replay room. It was pretty clear to oh, us he was out. And the fans know it too. The fans were just waiting for this, for the moment of Martin Maldonado showing off that cannon. Nope. Yeah, no chance. I don't think any group of fans more appreciates a throw and a tag than the Puerto Rican fans. Between the catchers that they've had over the years, uh, first and foremost, the guy who's now managing this team, Yadier Molina, now Maldonado. Lindor and especially Javi Baez. Mm. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Marcus Stroman now. Now it's not so much the misses arm from 
from side to side of home plate. Now their, their misses are more down. You want to see down misses. You don't want to see so much corner to corner misses. Right there at the knees, it's two and two. He's got this cutter working right now. He was kind of feeling it out the first two innings. He's got that combo with that fastball and that good split. After throwing him that split, might see it again. Drummond's 2 2. Got it. So the strikeout for out number three, a base hit for Nicaragua, but the powerful arm of Maldonado helps Stroman get through it. Well, one of the reasons why I said uh, that no fans appreciate a good throw and tag more than the Puerto Rican fans. <laughs> One of the most famous moments from the last World Baseball Classic. He was pointing into the catcher before he got the tag down. I mean, some people may argue and, and love the tag and love the throw and catch, but a lot of people argue why was Nelson Cruz running in that situation? <laughs> Understanding that he had no business with Molina and Baez at second base. Uh, but, you know, that's just some folks in the, in the other islands of the Dominican Republic. <laughs> God, he remembers that one. Oh, he remembers all right. Emmanuel Rivera off the outside. Bottom of the fourth, Puerto Rico with just a one nothing lead. They scored right away in the bottom of the first. And Rivera got credit for the run batted in when Nicaragua could not turn a double play. Mm -hmm. That's a good slider right there. 2 1 slider. Seeing kind of a book on righties. Likes to go to that fastball, move people's feet, go back away, and then use that slider. 2-2. Two, two. High, full count. As he gets older and matures, that, that overthrown fastball now becomes more at the letters. See, that's a ball out of the hand. Major League hitters will not swing at that. It, it, it is absolutely a ball out of the hand. Now you're going to start seeing as he develops those balls a little up in the zone being a little better. Oh, that's a good slider right there, 3-2. Beauty. Strike three calls. So that's the third strikeout for Carlos Rodriguez. Oh. Rivera didn't think so. He might not have thought so, but that's a good pitch. Well located, especially 3 2. That's what you call a big league slider right there. More than not, he's got 95 in the tank. You're expecting heater after blowing one up in the zone. Comes back with that slider. Game over. Imagine what this must feel like for Carlos Rodriguez. He's never pitched in the big leagues, not yet. He's only 24 years old. He went to high school here in Ferguson. Miami. So this is, in a lot of ways, this is his hometown. In front of this massive crowd full of all this passion and energy and against some of the greatest hitters in the world, he's pitching great. Baez on the ground. That one is stabbed by Blandino. Stands oh, up and got him. Wow, Alex Blandino. But they say anything you can do, I can do better. Alex Blandino right there, all out stretch. Caught that behind him. Once he catches it, everybody but him and Baez knows he's out. Great play. So now two down. We've seen Excellent defense on both sides. The one errant throw from Blandino, which allowed the, the only run of the game to score. What a makeup play there. Now Soto drives one to deep right field. Onto the warning track in front of the wall, and it's caught by Bermudez. So we'll go to the fifth. Don't let them hang on. They're hanging around. Still just one, nothing. Anticipation of this World Baseball Classic in Miami, where we've got Pool D stacked with great players and incredibly passionate fans. This is just the first game of this pool. The ballpark is full, and we've got a heck of a game going. It's one nothing. We go to the fifth. Nicaragua is hanging around as a big underdog against Puerto Rico. Dave, I live here in South Florida, and 
for the past six months, all they, they're talking about is the World Baseball Classic. It sure felt like it when we came this morning, even early morning. Buzz around the ballpark outside, flags waving, cars honking. We see there Marcus Stroman, 14 scoreless innings, dating back to 2017 World Baseball Classic. And as a matter of fact, that the last time he gave up four runs was in the second round against Puerto Rico. We've had to wait. Part of the anticipation for this year's tournament is the fact that the pandemic canceled a World Baseball Classic. Foul back to the backstop. And the count is two and two. So an extra long wait from 2017, which is still the only World Baseball Classic that Team USA has won, with Stroman leading the way. Now trying to lead Puerto Rico to their first World Baseball Classic championship. That's a situation right here where Marcus Stroman understands he doesn't have many bullets left. And the bullpen's now working for Puerto Rico. 2 2. Full count, 3 and 2. He's just trying to bait. These, these, are, these are pitches right here. In the first round, pitcher use limitation 65 pitches. You can finish off the hitter if the maximum is reached during it, Matt, but roughly 65 pitches, and it goes up as the Classic goes along on the ground pulled foul. Cleanup hitter for Nicaragua. Who was robbed by Javi Baez his first time up. Nicholas Padilla is the pitcher who's warming up for Puerto Rico on the bullpen. Yeah and I, and I think Marcus Stroman hasn't had his best stuff but yet gave you five. With ten pitches left. It's been incredible what Marcus Stroman. Oh, he's feeling it, baby. He is absolutely feeling that two step right now. Well, not necessarily having his best stuff, but still competing and getting people out. They haven't done much against them at all. And then the strikeout, I mean, that's never been a real big part of Marcus Stroman's game. He's got a couple of strikeouts in a row. And he is. He's I, I think he's just totally picked up on the spirit of this yeah. Puerto Rican team. He's he dancing after his strikeouts. Oh, here we go. He did a little Johnny Cueto. Oh. He's feeling himself now usually in this fifth inning fourth fifth sixth inning. He starts feeling himself starts feeling like hey this is a win right here. This is this I got my best stuff working right now. Another little. Hesitation move. Oh and two. Oh he's going to eat up that aggressiveness right now. I mean, he's got anywhere he can go. He's got nasty movement like we see right here on this pitch. And this is a fastball in the eyes of the hitter. And while you're halfway going, you know it's a slider and you've got no chance. Expand, expand, expand. 0 oh, 2. So we'll see if he can get through this hitter and give himself a chance to finish off Miranda and finish off the fifth entirely on its own. This is his inning. He knows it. One two. But you got to be efficient enough to where the rules don't force you out of the game. But we do understand if he starts the at bat. With 60 under 65 pitches he can go ahead and go over that 65 pitches. So he understands he's got a, not that much wiggle win room but just enough. The cat and mouse right now of a hitter in Marcus Strobel. 2 2. Hit to center field. Hernandez going back. Still going back. And he'll make the catch in front of the wall. Oh my. It's big ballpark here in Miami. Novoa gave that one a pretty good ride. Two down. But you see the athleticism of Kike Hernandez. I mean, this is a ball that he's got to go back about 50 yards and makes it look effortlessly. Marcus Stroman understands what he has just done. I mean, this is a guy that. Made it look effortless, yet was an absolute bomb to the warning track. Kike Hernandez gets that second out. No look, understands where he's at. He knows he's got plenty of it, feels the warning track. Basket catch. So two outs, and now he will have a chance. If he can get through Miranda, no matter how long this at bat takes, if he gets him out, he has finished five innings. 
which is a heck of an accomplishment with the first round pitch limits in place ball one. He knows it. He knows this is this is probably going to be it for him. He's going to unload the gas right here. Marcus Stroman. Two and oh. See Maldonado right there. He's an absolute leader behind the plate, isn't he? Letting him know, shaking his head. That's not a good pitch. It's not what we want right here. Let's double up on a 2 0 slider right here. That was a good one. Got the swing and miss from Miranda. So now that pitch means this next one will be 65. That guarantees this will be his final at bat of the day, no matter what. All right. Moments like this, though, he likes to either go soft or hard in. 2 1. Hit well to left field. Going back on it, Rosario. It is gone. And Nicaragua's tied the game. You talk about excitement with Elian Mirandas. You let a lesser team hang on against a powerhouse like Puerto Rico. You've got yourself a tight game. And by the way, we got to go to the bullpen. Marcus Stroman is done for the day. A dream, an absolute legend in Elian Miranda. A moment that he will never forget. A moment here in Miami, Florida. First round, first game of the World Baseball Classic. Elian Miranda, have a day. Get a curtain call. Only 23 years old. And the swing that knocks Stroman out and ties the game. Hanging slider 2 1. We were talking about it. He likes the soft stuff 2 1. Elian Miranda knew it was coming, and it was an absolute mistake. Elian Miranda, have yourself a day and a moment that he will never forget. Twenty-three year old Elian Miranda ties the game with one swing gets a curtain call in front of these Nicaraguan fans who are here in Miami Marcus Stroman one pitch away from finishing off five shutout innings instead we get a tie game and the new pitcher Nicholas Padilla comes in out of the Puerto Rican bullpen and throws ball one and we're going to see a lot of low 90s cutters a nice little slider that he likes to use and a sinker guy who necessarily doesn't throw that many. Doesn't throw that many strikes. There was a strike. Alex Blandino, who hit a ball hard his first time up, caught on the warning track in center field. He tried to put Nicaragua ahead. It's one of the few first rounders in, uh, in in the Nicaraguan draft. 14th pick overall by the Reds. He's got big league experience. Alex Blandino. That's on the outside. That's a that's a good cutter right there on that one one count. On the ground pass him out towards second Baez throws out Blandino and the side is retired. But Nicaragua getting great pitching now the offense comes to life and they've tied the game one to one. All right, so today's the day. Pool A and B both have already been underway halfway across the world. Pool C and D both get started here today. Pool C in Phoenix, Pool D here in Miami, USA, clearly the leader in that Pool C, although some other interesting teams. Pool D, I think, of all the pools here in these opening rounds as we advance toward the quarterfinals yonder, this is the most talent laden top to bottom pool there is. Absolutely. Pool D for me is an absolute wrecker when it comes to the divisions of what's going on. And not that we're surprised by it. 
tie game here, which is a surprise, and a new pitcher, J.C. Ramirez, takes over for Carlos Rodriguez, who was great today. J.C. Ramirez got a lot of experience, trying to keep this game tied. But we're not we're not at all surprised that Japan has looked really good. Japan is clearly one of the favorites in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. Well, you talk about Japan and their pitching and, and what they've got. They got about four or five guys that throw over 100 miles an hour. They're absolutely loaded. They can do it all. They they've played the cleanest oh. baseball so far in this in this tournament. One thing about J.C. Ramirez, he's not scared of the spotlight. Remember facing him with the Angels a ton, a guy who likes to use his fastball, secondary stuff. His best stuff is that changeup that he likes to use, and he's a big kid. The fastball plays, even though you, you see 91, 93 miles an hour, it feels like 96, 97. And the reason you can tell if you're watching at home is the takes by the hitters. They're, they're moving their feet a lot. They're, they're trying to get a little angsty. They're trying to cheat a little bit to the fastball. He's got that really good release point and a guy that hides the ball well. Three and one to Eddie Rosario first hitter for J.C. Ramirez since coming in out of the bullpen and now it's three and two. That's that good changeup. He can throw that changeup whenever he wants. I remember I used to sit on the changeup and knew the changeup was coming and still couldn't hit the changeup. Lots of major league experience for J.C. Ramirez bullpen. I, I think you would say that's definitely one of the strengths maybe the strength of this team Nicaragua still full three and two. You could be wondering Carlos Rodriguez why was he taken out of the game one potential reason 46 pitches below that 50 pitch threshold means in this first round one rest day and he would be available to pitch again. Yeah some can argue that some can argue he's a top prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers and they're saying hey he's got 50 pitches and that's all he's got for us because we, we don't know future nobody knows we don't know. All we know is that you can follow the rules and you get one day off and now you're ready to go all over again. But boy, what what an outstanding job he did. But but that thrush it, it is important. There is, is some real strategy involved. If you're just up against one of those thresholds, as a manager, you have a decision to make. Yep. The big difference between one day required rest at 46 pitches four days if you get to 50 and he got him swinging so Ramirez strikes out Rosario you can feel the Nicaraguan fans who have ramped up their energy level in this ballpark a lot of blue and reds and all of a sudden we're seeing a lot of white and blues really good pitch right there a little cut change. So one out and now Christian Vasquez the designated hitter struck out looking his first time up. It's on one and it, uh, look Puerto Rico's got massive expectations they've been in the championship game in two straight world baseball classics. They've got a star studded roster again this year the pressure will start to ramp up as this game gets deeper and deeper if it stays tied. And if you're Sandor Guido you're, you're all you're thinking about is bridging the gap to Loizan Ramirez. That's all you're twenty twenty to do. You you want to get nine more outs. You're not thinking about playing four more innings. You're thinking about between six to nine outs to making sure that I can put my best weapons out there and hopefully give Nicaragua a chance to get the lead. Sandor looks like he's enjoying the moment. Oh, he is. He's been enjoying it since day one in the qualifiers. Very proud to bring Nicaragua to the World Baseball Classic for the first time. Fastball misses high, one and two. That's a good pitch right there. 0 2. Not really elevating it to his eyes, but elevating it kind of to, to the Puerto Rico jersey fonts. Vasquez waits. And oh. slider. Wow, called the ball. His knees were buckling. Everybody buckled there. The catcher, the ump. <laughs> you see that pitch all over again right there. Oh. Christian Javier was not waiting for that pitch. That one definitely Fantastic. missed. So now it's full three and two. Situation in, in, in Vasquez. This is a cat and mouse game. Understanding he got buckled with that curveball, but with Ramirez, 
Do I go to that? I've thrown it too many times. I mean, this will be the third time. We'll see it the fourth. 3 2. He threw it, and he missed. Vasquez draws the walk. Just enough down right there. He threw it, I think, too many times. He's got that good fastball, good changeup. You know, this this next guy, Martin Maldonado, he likes to jump first pitch right here. He's an ambusher. He's always been an ambusher. If he gets a fastball, he, he's going to be firing on off cylinders right here. And he does have some power. He's not been a great hitter the last few years. But you see those home run numbers. Fastball misses low. So the one thing he kind of hangs his hat on in the big leagues these days, aside from the defense, which is elite, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Yeah. He's looking for one pitch and one pitch only right now. Got the call that time. Maldonado disagreed. He's got a good argument. He's got a good arm again, but a lot of times too, you know, where we see that pitch kind of borderline right there, it is definitely a ball on the white chalk. A lot of times as a hitter, if you're looking inner thirds do damage, you see that ball so far off that you're kind of second guessing yourself if the umpire calls it. So you can use the aggressiveness here if you're Ramirez. That one rides inside. Didn't what? miss by much. Tight strike zone on the inside part of the plate right yep. now. There goes Vasquez running. Maldonado lines one. Perfect execution. Hit and run into right center field. He'll come to third and stop there. The throw gets cut off around the mound. The second baseman went to cover. The ball was hit where the second baseman was. And Puerto Rico's got it set up first and third, one out. For the most part, two one counts are counts you want to do your hit and run on. Nobody expects a catcher at first base with a catcher hitting to do a hit and run like that, especially in a 1 1 game like this. But boy, it was executed to perfection. Go to first and third, and now you're aggressive in putting, if not your leader, your captain. And your heart of the Puerto Rican team, Lindor, up to bat. Nicaragua tied the game at the top of this fifth inning. Puerto Rico trying to answer. And their best player at the plate, Lindor, pulls one sharply and it gets through first. Everybody's safe. It's two to one. Lindor is not scared of the bright lights, isn't he? Or the moments like this. And for Vasquez, luckily he was able to get at least a, a little bit of a piece of his glove on it. If not, it would have been two RBIs and possibly Lindor at, at third base. Marcus Stroman loves it. Vasquez loves it. All of Puerto Rico here in this stadium loves it. Willie Vasquez, the first baseman for Nicaragua. I mean, that's a play. It was hit hard, but you feel that cleanly. You got a great chance to turn a double play, and Puerto Rico doesn't score. That's a second would be double play ball in this game that Nicaragua has not been able to turn that has turned into a run. You give this time they got nobody out. Yep, and you, you said it earlier on. You give a team like this extra outs more than not, Puerto Rico is going to take advantage of it. Strike here to Kike Hernandez. Well, this stadium is feeling the heat right now, aren't they? Big time. Two on, still only one out. And now it's one and one. They did give Lindor credit for a base hit. This goes back to the do you stay with Carlos Rodriguez or do you dump? That's a good point because now look, it could be that young pitcher prospect sort of had some early tournament limitations put on him 
not from inside the team but from outside that could be but it could also be that the move was made for strategy. Rodriguez was rolling. TK skies one foul off to the left. Or usually TK does a lot of damage with that pitch right there. He just missed that curveball right there up in the zone. He saw it too good spun out of it a little bit. Be careful throwing that pitch again. He has gone a lot of curveball right back to that fastball down and away. Now it is lined to the left. Coming in hard, Valle. He's going to have to play it on a bounce. Maldonado was waiting to make sure it wasn't going to be caught. So yep. he'll hold it third. Bases are loaded. How much you can do right there? Just kind of read the ball, read the outfielders. You're in no man's land if you're the base runner at second base. You got the broken bat in Ramirez. You can still be out of it. You're one pitch away from getting out of it right here and getting a double play. It's a good four seam cutter fastball off the end of the bat by Kike. Does just enough to stay through it for that base hit. Going to make a move. And I'm sure Sandor Guido's feeling like the game is on the line right here, right now. Bases loaded, a run in. We're in the fifth inning. Puerto Rico leading two to one. Pitching change right after this. Huge moment in this game. Nicaragua tied the game at one. Now Puerto Rico has answered, maybe with a little help. A defensive mistake, perhaps, allowed Puerto Rico to go back ahead, and now a chance for much more. Erasmo Ramirez, one of the best arms on Team Nicaragua, inherits the bases loaded, one out situation. The guy who was the Nationals pitcher of the year last year. And Jay Melendez oh. takes a strike. Good fastball to start it off. A strike thrower. Fastball curveball change up. He's looking for one thing, and that's the double play ball right here. Big pitch. Big at bat. A one. I love this. Looks one. It's going to get down center field. Maldonado is in. Right behind him, Lindor. He'll score. What a moment for MJ Melendez. He's been thinking about this since he was a little kid wearing the Puerto Rican jersey here in Miami understanding the situation velocity is not going to beat you by Ramos Ramirez all he's got to do is get a good pitch a strike and do work. You see a nice little cutter right here up in the zone. We talked about what he's been working on MJ Melendez trying to work on his lower half staying a little bit more put. Using the middle of the field once again. Knocking in two. Now Rivera swings at the first pitch. It's that one foul off to the right out of play. Just the very first game. <laughs> Look at the emotions, huh? Game seven of the World Series. It's only game one, Dave. Look, I think part of that, a check swing, and the ball's put in play. Ramirez's only play, I guess, was to first, and that will bring home Kike Hernandez. So another run is in. It's five to one. It's a mental breakdown right there. Situation to turn two. Orozmo Ramirez just reacted. He's looking at the runner at third base. Maybe he thought there was two outs. Uh, I, I guess that's possible. It took a while for the ball to get to him just because of the way it was hit, but Javi Baez fouls one straight back. 
I mean it, at a minimum even if you're wondering well do I have time to whirl around and start a double play and I think he definitely could have come home would have been risky but you're already down four to one now it's five to one How about Rivera with two ground balls and two RBIs <laughs> potential double plays both balls and gets credit it's a game of baseball Baez bounces one and nobody's there that one gets through Melendez will score six to one or you give a big team like this outs they're going to hurt you and all times. Even the pitch sweepings right there by Baez. They've been eating them up all game with sliders. Basically, the first fastball he's hit, he puts it in play for a base hit and a ribby. El Mago doing magical things. In a lot of ways that's right now the story of this game Puerto Rico has been brilliant defensively and Nicaragua has not been. Big swing right there by Soto. And a hit for MJ Melendez which really built this inning. And they've added on since that five runs across after Nicaragua had tied it at one. It's only two. Seven hits in the game. Five of them for Puerto Rico in this inning alone. All of them have been singles. Haven't had an extra base hit yet. So to the ninth hitter of the inning. On the ground to third. That one scooped up. Colbert. And he gets the force out at second to finally end the inning. But after Nicaragua tied the game up, what an answer from Puerto Rico. They lead six to one. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of World Baseball Classic Inc. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Just a great host for this pool and later on the semifinals and the finals of this World Baseball Classic Miami Florida where the passion for baseball the passion for these two countries on full display. And a wild fifth inning. We go to the sixth. The new pitcher for Puerto Rico, Yaxel Rios, takes over on the mound with Puerto Rico back ahead. And if you saw that first pitch, I, I think from here on out, this is where you're going to see by that Puerto Rican bullpen staff. It's going to be absolute fire. 97, 98 mile an hour fastballs. He likes to throw that nice splitter and slider off of it at 86. But Yaxel and the rest of that team in that bullpen in left field, the team Rubios, will have absolute fire coming out of it. Sandy Bermudez trying to help Nicaragua come up with some kind of answer. They have to be a little bit stunned after the home run tied the game in dramatic fashion. The ballpark was popping with the Nicaraguan fans. Five run bottom of the fifth for Puerto Rico. See Martin Maldonado earlier in the inning he was at bat and they, he got a call pitch that was awful way. He didn't like that. He, he was talking to the umpire and chirping at him. Letting him know, hey, I like that pitch. As you see him right there, he's talking right there. He might be looking at the other place. At, you know, you think he's looking at the dugouts, but he's he's chirping right now. And you know, Mike Stabrook, he he's giving it right back. <laughs> the inside. Full, well, I mean, the point he's making is, you called that a strike when I was a hitter. Why is it not a strike now? It's been an on. Back and forth all game. That's what Martin Maldonado is so great. Calms people down, but at the same time, since the first pitch of the of game, he's chirping, making sure it's a feel for that that zone. Good swing there by Bermudez. Count remains full, three and two. But there's one thing, sir, and I, I think he's going back to that heater. 97-98. See Jack Sells Rio's numbers right there. 
currently a part of the Braves organization. Plenty of big league experience in the past, and he got it with a 99 mile an hour fastball. Riding at your knees and your hands. You see it one more time right here. It's a two seamer at 99 miles an hour. Oh man, that's velocity. So one out, and the ninth place hitter Valle comes up. Valle 0 for 1. Nicaragua has only the two hits. Of course, the one was the home run that tied it up. Dave, I'll, I'll oh. let you know what 100 feels like. Imagine getting a white aspirin and being about 20 feet away and asking somebody to throw it at you. That's what the hitter sees. A nice little small dot of white coming at you. And not knowing it's coming, by the way, because it's got a slider and a cutter on top of it. Not fun to be a hitter when you're throwing 100. That one was 98 from Rios. It's 0 and 2. Flip shot, shallow left, and it's going to fall. Base hit. So, two strike hitting from the ninth place at Avalle. Nicaragua's got its third hit of the game. That's a little good piece of hitting right there. Being protective, obviously down two strikes. He gets that fastball, not trying to do too much. Just, just put the wood on it, hopefully, and pray for success. Now, the leadoff hitter, Montez, who had the first hit for Nicaragua today. If you're Montez, you got to understand if you're watching the game, Rios has thrown mostly all fastballs. He's thrown one cutter. That's about it. Other than that, it's been 100. You ready for the fastball here? Shows oh. a bunt, and it was a slider for a strike. Showing a nice little cutter off of that, too. If you're Nicaragua right now, you're playing for the most part base to base. I know you're running out of outs, so base to base is the go to. You don't want to be so aggressive. You know you got Maldonado behind the plate. If you can take the extra base, go ahead and take it on a base hit. But other than that, it's an easy base to base game right now. Mano y mano is what they say if you're Puerto Rico and you're defending. I got to get every single out right now and not make any mental mistakes. 1 1 blew it by him at 97. This is more of the rhythm that Puerto Rico likes to play with. Nice little cushion of a lead. Having a guy that can throw 97, 98 miles an hour, it's not that much pressure. There's no high intensity going on right now. It's just playing defense, being out there. It's like you're playing golf and everything you're hitting it up the drive is in the fairway. That's where you want to be. You want to be there the whole time and kind of dictating where this game goes. Here's the one two and struck him out. So heavy fastballs first couple of hitters mixed in the off speed stuff and strikes out Montez. Yeah, that's that nice splitter that he likes to throw. He throws that hundred but the back of his head he's, he's got that good splitter with that good cutter and he can use it and boy it's sharp. Two down. Ton. The outside ball one. Boy, he looks he looks like it's effortless coming out of out of there, doesn't he? He's got a big arm. I mean, you talk about the cushion for Puerto Rico. They don't need a big cushion if you can get it to the last inning, because they have <laughs> the ultimate ninth inning weapon in this World Baseball Classic, Edwin Diaz. Will we see the trumpet come out? I hope so. If we don't, everybody's going to be disappointed. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> We, we, we've spent the whole winter time thinking about the next time we would hear it, see it. <laughs> uh, we got the Team Rubios, the Trumpet Man. I mean, we got it all. The magician at second base, Machete, a catcher, the captain and the leader, Lindor. Oh. One and two. Boy, that is running. That starts middle third outside of the plate and runs right inside to your hands. Good luck. Perfect pitch. Now it's one to two.
Rios. Well, one thing about Rios is he understands his fastball runs because he's on the first base side of that mound. More than not, a lot of these righties, they like to either be in the middle of the mound or on the third base side of the mound. With him, he understands he's got the hundred, but it's got right and sink to the right-handed hitters. That's that's why you see him. He's got that leverage. Kind of using a little bit of geometry right there, understanding where his his arm angle goes and drives into that hitter, especially the right-handers. Struck him out. Nasty. That is just nasty. Three strikeouts for Rios. Middle six in Miami. Six to one, Puerto Rico. Well, there is a poignant and very tragic connection between these two countries facing off of the World Baseball Classic. One of the true all time greats, the Puerto Rican Roberto Clemente, who died in that plane crash in early 1973 on his way to Nicaragua after an earthquake there, bringing relief supplies. Roberto Clemente. Truly one of the all time greatest and a hero still to this day in baseball in Puerto Rico. And died in service of his. Friends in Nicaragua. Thanks to the Clemente Museum for some of those in images we, we shared. I've gotten to uh, know a little bit of Luis Clemente. His son. Uh, amazing. Absolute you know continue to lives. Live. It, it, his name. I mean, he's just an amazing person. You talk to him, and he'll give you the time and day. Absolute, just wonderful person to be around. Talks about baseball, loves baseball, is very involved. 15-time All-Star, 12 Gold Glovers, four batting titles, an MVP, and a World Series MVP. My goodness. Maybe the greatest throwing arm in the history of the game. Ground ball up the first baseline, picked cleanly by Vasquez. Round number one. So Rosario is 0 for 3. Junior Tejas, the new pitcher, the fourth of the game for Nicaragua. If you've never been to the Clemente Museum, well worth a visit. You go to Pittsburgh. Here's Vasquez who walked to start the rally last inning in the fifth with one out and nobody on. Vasquez and a, a a hidden play in this game, a very close pitch that would have been strike three was called a ball. Yep. The bat continued. He worked the walk, and that started it all. The hit and run for Maldonado, and here we are, six to one ball game. Boy, that happened fast, didn't it? A couple of defensive misplays, mistakes. Puerto Rico took advantage. And it was great execution by Maldonado on that hit and run play, which might be the key play in the whole game as it stands right now. When you look at Junior Tejas right here, kind of a three quarter arm slot. Not fun for the right handers, a lot better for the lefties. Kind of sinking it, running it. Do it all. He went over the top right there. When you talk about the athleticism of, of, of pitchers nowadays. You got a guy that just we just saw with Puerto Rico in Rio is throwing 100 miles an hour. And now we've seen a guy in Tejas who can be a submariner over the top, a little funkiness to him. That one is drilled to right center field. Off the bat of Vasquez. Off the wall. Hustling his way into second. There's the first extra base hit of the game for Puerto Rico. Boy, there's, there's one thing that Christian Vasquez has always done is hit the ball the other way. And he's learned throughout his years in the big leagues how to drive the ball the other way. Gets a fastball right there, a little bit up in the zone. Stayed through the baseball. What a beautiful swing, especially for Christian when he's going the other way. It is short, it is connected, and it's pure hitting right there. By the Port Puerto Rican DH. So now Maldonado, who had that key hit his last time up, off the outside with a breaking ball, it's 1 0. Oh. 
great response these last couple innings for Puerto Rico because really the pressure I, I'm sure was starting to build in that dugout. Heavy favorites in this game. You know you already have to play a loaded Dominican team, a team from Venezuela that's got tons of high-end big league talent. You got a team from Israel that has some established star level yep. big leaguers. And you can tell in that dugout too, as soon as they kind of unloaded in that fifth inning, everybody, oh, okay, now we're good. Now we can play. And that's usually what it takes, especially in these tournaments, kind of these first games, these first four or five innings. You want to feel yourself and, and know what type of, of, of team you have, but at the same time, it, it's a it's a hundred meter sprint. You, know, you don't have time to kind of feel your way around. You got to go. Yeah, to hear Molina, the manager of this Puerto Rican team, outside three and one. Tejas having a hard time commanding that breaking ball. One thing with Yadier, though, he's calm, cool, very collective. Oh. Full count three and two. Doesn't turn into an absolute grind of an at bat right here. Tough righty coming at you. you Want to be careful with Lindor. Understanding you got Kike Hernandez behind another righty. This is a big at bat right here. On the ground and through the third baseman, and it kicks off the shortstop Leighton, who hustles after it, and that will keep Vasquez at third. I think if Colbert lets it go, the shortstop makes the play. If Colbert feels it cleanly, he makes the play. Yeah. Instead, nobody could make the play. Well, they teach you as a third baseman is always try to cut off. If you can cut off that that ball and cut off your shortstop for a longer throw, that's the way to go. That's the rule. Now, if you've got to get off your feet, it's a little bit tougher. Understanding that it is Maldonado, not a great runner. You would have had all the time in the world, but boy, oh boy, first and third one out right now for Lindor up to bat. Not a good situation for Nicaragua. Now the defense again. Lindor bounces that one to first. They're going to go to second for one. The throw back to first. Got him double play. So that time they do turn two and they get through it. <laughs> Puerto Rico wants to make sure they're asking for some looks. We'll take a look. Did they turn two? I thought they did. Yeah, they did. It's a double play. So we'll cue up the music again. No <laughs> replay. We'll go to the seventh, six to one, Puerto Rico. Now back here in Miami, first game of the day, first game of this World Baseball Classic inside Pool D. Which is just loaded with talent. Puerto Rico had its hands full for much of this game. Nicaragua tied it up on a home run in the top of the fifth inning, but a five run bottom of the fifth. It's six to one as we go to the seventh. And another new pitcher for Puerto Rico out of the bullpen for Yadier Molina, Dwayne Underwood Jr. Yeah, Dwayne Underwood Jr. One of the things he's done, though, is drastically change his pitch mix. In 2021, he was more of a fastball changeup. Now, He's a little bit more of a cutter, slider, curveball changeup. He's 96, 97 with that fastball. Listen, he, he's cut down his barrel rate to just almost 10%. So this is a guy who kind of reinvented himself a little bit and has, has got good stuff. Has earned a spot here with Puerto Rico. He had a solid year last year for the Pirates. He was the fourth pitcher of the game. Marcus Stroman was outstanding until the very yeah, was. last pitch that he threw. <laughs> And that one left the ballpark to tie the game. Vasquez left handed hitter breaks his bat and hits a little flare to short caught by Lindor. Well, that's the second bat he's got him blown up on they, they got a book on him they've been throwing hard in on him soft away just to show and a lot of cutters in. Give yourself another another piece of wood right there. <laughs> Not fun. See that cutter right there it's a late life cutter. You think you're on in a lot of a second. It's off your hands. Heads up, everybody. Yeah, 
One out for Colbert. It's remarkable that Nicaragua has not been charged with an error in this game. Now, look, I'm not going to get into a whole thing about the official <laughs> score because ultimately it doesn't matter. But that does not reflect the story yeah. of this game. The defense has been a huge differentiator between these two teams. A lot of times, when you look at these teams, what separates the good ones from the the average ones are base running and defense. And if you give a team a powerhouse like Puerto Rico or a good team like Dominican Republic or even a team like Venezuela extra outs more than not they're going to make you pay. That one got in on his hands one hopper to Baez two down for the movement on Underwood is unbelievable. I mean we've seen a really sharp cutter on a lefty who blew up his bat and now an absolute burner into his hands on a two seamer up and in on Colbert. It is late. It's got movement. It's east to west, not just north to south. Not a lot of fun if you're a, a hitter right now. So two down. Oh. Catcher Novoa takes a strike. Novoa last time up drove onto the wall in center field. Key game when you know in center field he, he plays somewhat shallow. You know, he understands that he can go back. Most most center fielders nowadays they they rather go in. They rather come in on a play than back on a play. Kike doesn't necessarily do that. He kind of plays in a, in a more shallower center field. He understands he can go get it if it's if it's over his head. And I always loved outfielders that did that. You know they they rather take away the bloopers and if you ask any pitcher hey I'd rather you take away the bloopers for an out than the ball that's in the gap that's usually my fault if you're the pitcher right you let one go right into the barrel of a bat and more than not that's his fault now if Kiki can catch it great but if, if the bloopers are usually the, the tough pitches that you make that are off the hand of the bat or in a barrel that you more than not want to make one and two two down and he struck him out a dominant inning for Underwood. He retires his side in order and gets that strikeout. Seventh inning stretch, six to one, Puerto Rico. Baseball Classic, Puerto Rico leading Nicaragua at six to one, bottom of the seventh. Tejas still into pitch. Rodolfo Bone is now the catcher for Nicaragua. One change defensively. And the count is going two to Kike Hernandez leading off for Puerto Rico. Plenty of chances. We hear it a lot. Can, can, can we learn all the lyrics, Dave? Uh, that, <laughs> I'm going to put you in charge I'll of that. Quiz you at the end of it. That's going to be your area of expertise. <laughs> Get your uh, an empanada. And we'll sit down, and I'll just go over the whole lyrics okay. with you, and, and you know we're good. Sounds pretty good. Maybe a Cuban coffee, and we're good. Food, music. Now we're talking. <laughs> 2-0 to MJ Melendez, one of the big hits in the game, a two-run single in the middle of the five-run fifth. That is the difference in the game. Mm. Oh. That's a good pitch right there, 2-0. MJ was gearing up right now to make it 7-1. 
you was waiting for that fastball, especially if you're facing a guy like Tejas. You, you got to try to see the ball as deep as possible. Like right there, that was a good swing right there. Trying to go the other way, trying to use that left center gap. If you're MJ, you understand. Hey, he's going to be careful with me. I got to be careful with him. Velocity is not going to beat me. Kind of used to see him at bat right now, two two like Erasmus Ramirez, seeing the ball first. See the ball first, then react. Full count 3 2 and a pop up into shallow center field. Who's going to take it? It'll be the shortstop, Leighton. Two down in that fifth inning. Lindor, a ball that probably should have been handled at first base, was ruled a hit. And then Melendez, after that, flipped one into center field to drive home two. A little check swing. High hop comebacker Erasmo Ramirez had some choices to make, just took the out. That extended the inning, no double play. And Javi Baez bounced one through for another run for Puerto Rico. So it wasn't like it was a bunch of home runs and no. gappers, but add it all up, it was a five run inning for Puerto Rico, the difference in the game. Sometimes that's what happens. Well placed balls into the right holes, and here we are. 6 1 game, but that's Puerto Rico, and we'll be back in a moment. A little switching change. Coming right up. Music, he's going to do play by play. Think of all that's coming here in this World Baseball Club. Oh, my goodness. Fifth pitcher of the game for Nicaragua, Kevin Gadea, who's pitched in the minor leagues in his career. He's 28 years old. Was with the Mets in 2022. He's had pretty good success. Been with the Yankees, has been with the Rays, with the Mariners in their organization over the years. Ball one to Emmanuel Rivera. Six to one Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico scored first in the very first inning. Nicaragua tied it with a home run dramatically in the top of the fifth. Five run bottom of the fifth. Here we are in the last of the seventh. And it will be interesting with a 6 1 score to see how Yadier Molina wants to play it with the back end of his bullpen. I don't think you'll see the, the Diaz's brothers. I, I, I just don't think it's smart. I'd rather save that bullet. For another day, unless it becomes a situation where you're in danger of losing a game or tying a game. I mean, a, a different format, a different kind of tournament. You might say, "Well, let's get our big guy just yeah. some game adrenaline experience." He's been pitching in spring training. It's different than this, but I just don't know if you can do that. I don't put my best weapon unless they can beat me with a grand slam. Until they can't beat me with a grand slam, no need. Four pitch walk drawn by Rivera. It's not just Edwin Diaz, it's also Alexis Diaz. Only in the Diaz family would you look at Alexis's numbers and go, yeah, okay. <laughs> just okay because the other guy, the older one, was saying, hold on a second, man. I still got the reins at the house. And 17 strikeouts per nine innings. That's Edwin Diaz. Just I'm amazing. Just filthy. And maybe the greatest show in the sport right now when he comes in out of the bullpen. We'll see if that carries over to the World Baseball Classic, whether he can bring the the entrance here. Javi Baez swings and misses. Strike one. But Baez has seen a steady diet of breaking balls all day. Only fastball he was able to hit and see was for a base hit. I don't expect the, the, the book to change. Pulls that one into left field. That's going to be a hit for Baez. Rivera tears around second and heads for third. The throw goes toward third. Nobody's at second, and so Baez will make it into scoring position. I think Baez was understanding the situation right there. Kind of set soft. You can see his leg kick was a little softer, a little bit more with rhythm. 
Got a bad breaking ball up in the zone. Boy, he didn't miss it right there. Big league hitters will not miss those bad breaking balls. And as we see the alignments with the defense right there, I'm not sure what the second baseman in Blandino was doing, but he was doing a double cut and he left second base all open. And all of a sudden, this this went from a you know possibly a, a little bit of a rally to a bigger rally if you get two out knocks here. So meeting on the mound, Gadea has come in and walked Rivera, now giving up. They hit to Baez. And Nicaragua's hopes are already slim in this game. If they have any kind of hope, they got to get through this. You think they're having fun in that dugout right now? Yeah, it might not have been quite as loose after no. that home run that tied the game. <laughs> So now Naftali Soto, one for three. Still another game to go in Pool D later tonight here in Miami. The Dominican Republic against Venezuela. I mean, this ballpark is alive for this matchup. Imagine what it's going to be tonight. Naftali has, has looked really well by letting the ball travel. Hit some some deep fly out to right center. Has a knock. Boy, he's got a really short swing. Very compact. Really trusts his hands. Those were one of the things as a youngster when me and him played together in Cincinnati. He he trusted his hands. He is a hitter first and then a slugger. Gadea is having a hard time throwing strikes. It's three and zero. Oh. Got a first wave. They're moving, not wasting any time. On the ground, the third, and it goes right through. Colbert, that'll score a run. And the defensive problems for Nicaragua continue. Hey, I think it's safe to say this will be an error. I'm not taking anything for granted at this point, but that, that has to be. You look at a team like this, they've given up Puerto Rican at least five extra outs. More than not, those are going to be at least three or four more runs, and that's what's happened here today. Their defense just has collapsed on them. Yeah, I think true. I mean, they've only been charged with one error as a team. I think truly you could say five different plays that could have been made that weren't made. Runner takes off and no throw with Baez at third. And it's not just the physical mistakes, we're talking about the mental mistakes as well. You know, opening the base, you know, doing all the things that you're not supposed to do to giving a chance to the Puerto Rican team to kind of mount on on this lead. If I'm Rosario here, I'm sitting as soft as he gets. He hasn't shown me he can throw that fastball for a strike just yet. Missed with another fastball. It's 2 0. You can tell by the takes. He was sitting soft all the way right here. Even in, in a fastball count, he wanted to make sure he saw that pitch all the way. He's looking in zones now, what we call windows in Eddie Rosario's world. Nothing down in the zone. Everything's got to be up for me to go green light on him. Everything down, he just, he just doesn't commit to it at all. No, Soto had the green light 3-0. Well, Rosario had the, the light 3-0 right here. So far, it's worked out for Puerto Rico. I will probably give him the 3-0 right now, like. Rosario is a free swinger, though. At times, he could get out of the zone here. 3-0. He took that one. Good pitch right at the knees, 3-1. Changes for Rosario right here. He's got to hunt windows up in the zone. That's ball four. Missed down. Bases are loaded. Second walk issued by Cadea. We do now have the possibility we're at the point of the game where you could have an early termination. The game will end when one team is ahead by 10 or more runs after seven innings. We're in the seventh. 
You have to be ahead by 15 or more runs after five innings to end earlier. Another pitching change coming up for Nicaragua trying to keep this game going down seven to one. Just an all out party here in Miami for the fans of Puerto Rico whose team was in a real battle with Nicaragua in the middle innings it was tied one to one. But now Puerto Rico has a chance even with two outs to end this game here in the seventh inning they lead seven to one the bases are loaded Fidencio Flores takes over. Yeah Fidencio Flores right now in this situation of the game you're just wanting to get some outs you can try to go deep into this game. But for him, it's about creating that first out and, and, and making sure you don't maximize more runs for the Nicaraguans' hold. Well, they need one out for sure here because that early termination rule, if at the end of this seventh inning or in this bottom of the seventh inning, if they were to score four more runs and take a 10 run lead, the game would end. Christian Vasquez, who pounded one off the right center field wall, his last time up for a double. Baez Soto Rosario out there two down. Well off the outside for ball one. And you're Christian Vasquez right now. Velocity is not going to beat you. You know Fidencio Flores is not a hard throwing guy. A guy who hasn't had much success. Even in the Nicaraguan Winter League. Got an ERA over six. Not that many strikeouts. Missed well off the inside there. It's 2 0. A real tough spot for a guy pitching for the first time in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, even during his warm ups, he looked a little bit erratic as well. If you're a Christian right now, it's kind of maybe take a pitch here 2 0. It's hard to, to kind of do. Call two and one. That's the window. That's where you kind of want to go. You want to go up the ladder like that. If you see that pitch again, more than not, you'll probably see it again. That's where you want to connect and you want to go green light on him. That was a drivable pitch right there, but I think Christian Vasquez is a little bit in between and saying, man, I, I just don't know if he's going to throw me a strike. Now it's game on. That one was off the outside, the breaking ball, three and one. Much better take right there as well. Now, here's the time that. You know, Christian can be a little selfish here and say, "All right, this is my time right now. This is my time. If I get a good pitch to hit right here, I'm, I'm looking to slug. I'm looking to drive them all in. You ain't got nothing else to lose. You're, you're up seven-one. There's two outs. Bases loaded. Three-one count. If it's not the window you're looking at, you let it go. Three-one pitch. Vasquez up the middle base hit. That'll score two. Baez is in Soto right behind him nine to one Puerto Rico oh, he's at professional at bats all day long Christian back has used the whole field driving balls to right center right here getting a fastball up in the zone and not missing it scorching it up the middle for two ribbies just a professional at bat he's had a great game. His walk started the five run fifth inning rally. Double his last time up, and now a two run single. And he represents the winning run. Our team Maldonado fouls this one back. If Maldonado could hit one down the line or into a gap, and Vasquez oh, would we're running. score. And I think for the team Puerto Rico, they understand that too. They understand it. Hey, if they can cut off two innings, yeah. three innings out of their, their their game, why not? I can save my bullpen. Remember, this is going. To, this is a longer tournament. The more rest my bullpen has, the better it is. Molina knows that. Puerto Rico plays Venezuela tomorrow. Ronaldo chase that breaking ball. It's 0-2. Game in the fifth. Here we are in the bottom of the seventh. It's nine to one. 
Maldonado two for three himself. And he took strike three call. So we'll go to the eighth. Three more runs, but the game's not over. It's nine to one. All right, Dave, let's look at the bright spots for Nicaragua. Elian Miranda's about to be in part by StatCast. Nice little solo homer on a back go slider. Boy, he did not miss it. What a moment for him, for the youngster. 387 feet. As soon as he left his bat, he knew it was going to be a special swing. And what made it so dramatic was Marcus Stroman, we knew, was on his last hitter. He had reached the first round pitch limit in the middle of the at bat. And it was a 1 0 lead for Puerto Rico, and Stroman had been great. And literally the last pitch that he threw, Miranda hits it out to tie the game. But here he comes good, up. That I'm one good. got a piece of the umpire, and Maldonado checked on Mike Estabrook, make sure he's okay. So since that moment, Puerto Rico scored eight runs and made it a 9 1 game. Anthony Maldonado takes over on the mound now. Dropped there by the Marlins in the 11th round, Anthony. Bethune Cookman University. Out here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Has some pretty good numbers in double A AA and triple A with the Marlins. Under three ERA. Big dude. Big kid. 6'4, 220. 62 innings. Check this out 86 strikeouts. Especially dominant numbers against right handers. So just file that one away for maybe a big at bat later in the tournament. Need a big strikeout. He's your guy. He could be your guy. I mean, they have so many. They have so many guys out there in the back end of that bullpen. Leon Miranda, 0 2. Back. That's short. Doesn't try to do too much right there. Doesn't have a leg kick. Where nowadays most guys have, have leg kicks. He's a guy even with 0 2. He's short, coming right at you. Maldonado got it with the breaking ball. That is tight. It is sneaky. Right, you see, you see that little dot for the slider. Usually that's what the hitters see, but right there, when you got that velocity 94, 95, a guy that's 6'5, that slider comes at you pretty fast. Very hard to determine whether it's a fastball or a slider coming at you, especially 0 2 trying to protect. Him. So now Alex Blandino for two. Oh. Slider right on the outside, strike one. See in that slider, you can see why oh, he's so tight. tough on righties. It, it, it's got, you know, it's got late movement, kind of the same place as that as that strikeout. You see, it is a fastball, 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 right at the last second, it, it just falls off the table. Ooh. Unhittable pitch right there. Then you can go fastballs up in the zone off of that. I probably think Maldonado is going to call the same pitch, another slider down and away. There it is. Lock. Even you know that's a professional right there, Maldonado. It's a score nine to one in the eighth inning. Gets a one-two slider down in the dirt, and he just blocks it. Just gets stuck right there. Most guys would just throw the glove at it. Oh, it's a nine to one ball game, no big deal. But it's a ball out of the hand. Not Maldonado. Maldonado doesn't take one pitch for granted. Mike Matheny used to tell me, even in warm-ups. In between innings, he wanted to block everything, and I said, so, "Well, why would you bother to do that?" He said, "I want the pitcher to have 100% confidence, zero doubt, no matter what the situation is, that I'm going to block the ball." Trent. Right. Right three call. You've seen enough sliders. Maldonado is just. Just understanding the situation, he was sitting on a slider. Let's go with the back door on him on a freezer. 
a 95 miles an hour, 93 miles an hour fastball painted on the line. That's the beauty of Maldonado right there, where most guys, you know, they're seeing a lot of sliders. Maldonado just changes it up on you right away and says, no, no, no. I'm going to change the script on you. We're going to go four seam on you and freeze you. All right, so now we'll get a pinch hitter for Nicaragua with two down here in the eighth inning. It's Isaac Bernard, son of Marvin Bernard, one of the all time greatest yep. players to ever come out of Nicaragua. Isaac has played in the independent leagues these last few years. It's the 94 mile an hour fastball for a strike. Bouncer to first, and right there, Soto for out number three. Strong World Baseball Classic debut for Maldonado. Nine to one, Puerto Rico. Well, we're in Miami and our specific neighborhood. I mean, Yonder, you know this town better than anybody. A little Celia Cruz right there. A little Havana. A little Havana's finest. Best coffee in town, you can find it at Little Havana. Best pastelito, guava pastelitos are Little Havana. Or maybe a cafecito or cortadito. Those are my favorite ones. <laughs> I got a lot of learning to do. <laughs> Luckily, we're going to be here for the next 11 days. <laughs> Isaac Bernard stays in the game. He plays left field. Valle moves over from left to right. Two runs wins it for Puerto Rico here in the bottom of the eighth inning, the early termination rule is in play nine to one game Flores the pitcher to Francisco Lindor now the count is two and oh you get the top of the order here so Puerto Rico would have a chance to do it and look to your point it's not like they've had to blow through all their top high leverage relievers but even just saving an inning out of the bullpen for Yadier Molina yeah. could be valuable. I, I agree. I mean, even you know, people can say, "Well, it's just one inning. It's, it's 20 pitches. Give a give an opportunity to a guy." But you might have to use that guy in the later round. So any chance you can get to cut off some innings out of your pen, it, it's a must. And I guarantee you, right now, him and, and Alex Centrone, they're talking about it and they're saying, "Hey, if I can just get two runs, I, I'll do it. I, I'll, I'll be able to just take away an inning out of somebody." Door chased that one up high for strike three. So Francisco Lindor goes down swinging. Love the Lindor quick scouting right there. Hey, it's probably saying I don't I don't know what just happened there. Swung at a bad pitch. Hopefully you can get him for him. Bye bye. Yeah, here's the scanning report. Don't swing at a pitch up at your shoulders. Yeah, he's saying hey that slider backed up on him. It didn't really have that that I, I can read the, the his. Uh, what he was trying to tell MJ Melendez right there was saying, hey, the, back, the slider doesn't have that bite that you think it may have. It's just going to back up on you a little bit. Stay through it. And a little doubt, man. A lot of these guys, they've never seen these guys. Right there, we see another slider that just backs up. You think it's going to go down and away, and it's just a cement mixer. Which some guys say that's the best pitch in baseball. They don't know how to throw it, it just happens naturally. It can be the best pitch in baseball. Just don't throw it too often. <laughs> because the barrel will really go. Kike lines that one, caught it short. Tong out number two. Nicaragua trying to hang in there and at least get one more turn at bat. Two down, bases empty for the third place hitter, MJ Melendez. Had some really good at bats. Like either Kansas City Royals are expecting really big things out of. You know, in 2022, he had a monster year, his rookie year. But this is a hybrid guy. This is a guy who came up as a catcher, can play all the outfield positions, has a ton of power. They're expecting this guy to take that next step and, and be that guy that can kind of be that pillar of winning attitude for the Kansas City Royals for a long time. That ball's crushed. Center field. 
<laughs> kind of crushed. Right out of the glove. <laughs> so we go to the ninth inning. One last chance for Nicaragua. Nine to one. Well, an established and very good big leaguer, Emilio Pagan, is going to try to get the final three outs for Puerto Rico. A close, tight game in the middle innings has turned into a 9 1 lead for Pagan's Puerto Rican team. Last year with the Twins, 59 appearances. Still that strikeout total, 63. And I know the ERA was higher than we're used to seeing with Emilio Pagan, but 84 strikeouts in 63 innings. Yeah, this is important for him. This is a guy who, who obviously. In his second World Baseball Classic appearance, I love what he did. Former teammate of mine, but he's changed up a lot of things. Before he was more of a fastball slider, still in the mid 90s, but now he's kind of used that that really good split that he's created to lefties, who's done a fantastic job. He, he's pretty much closed out on lefties. I mean, lefties would just absolutely kill him. All of a sudden, in 22 and two, he, he created that that splitter. Lefties are hitting 196. 9 1 2 hitters for Nicaragua down to their final three outs in their first game. In pool D. One ball, one strike to count. Valle has one of the three hits for Nicaragua. Single in the fourth, single in the sixth by Valle, and of course the home run in the fifth by Leon Miranda. The only Nicaraguan run. That one's inside. Two and one. Side three and one. Hmm. Three and two. You know, we talked about. The Puerto Rican infield and, and how strong they are defensively, but you, know, you talk about what they've done offensively this year, uh, this in this game. Seven hits out of the 11 for Puerto Rico were, were all done by their infielders, including Maldonado, including actually, if you want to think about the designated hitter in Vasquez, two extra hits of that. So that's well, nine hits right there by their infield. Pulled into right field, base hit. Valle's got his second hit of the game. So he's been a real positive for Nicaragua in that number nine spot in the order. Nice piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much. Gets a nice, nice fastball right over the plate. And we've seen that from him. Not, not trying to really lift the baseball, just nice and short, let everything else happen for itself. Juan Diego Montes and his mustache making they're going strong. Their world baseball classic debut. <laughs> That's one of the hits. I mean, that's great. Of uh, all the hairdos we've seen, and we will see, it's got to be the best facial we've seen, oh. or we will see, all turned. That's going to be tough to beat right there. And he's played well. Had the base hit, then tried to steal against Martin Maldonado. How did that go? I saw well, Maldonado Machete. Let him know. If you, you know, play with fire, you'll probably get burnt. Oh my. Oh my goodness. You talk about soft hands right there. That's a spiked slider right there, not trying to do too much. Obviously, Pagan right there. No, don't try to be too quick. But look at his hands. Look how soft he is with it. Looks it all the way through. I mean, that's that's art right there. If you're looking at a catching position. It's part of what they have to teach now because so many teams want their catchers to use that one knee down position. Good swing, foul ball, one and two. The idea behind that, of course, is to frame the low pitch, get a better position to frame the low pitch. Yes. And teams really value that. But you have to trust your catcher's ability to pick a ball 
in the style that you just demonstrated in order to make it all work. A lot of times now technology has gotten so much better where they have these catchers work on this type of stuff. They have softer baseballs. They have balls that are kind of more of a rubbery ball. So they'll literally throw it on a machine in a backfield and just have to work on it consistently to get better at it. Right there. That's that's the MO right there of a catcher. That's how you block the ball right there. Glove down on the ground on one knee still being athletic enough. And look where this ball goes. It literally goes right to his chest protector right down on him, like a glue. That's beautiful. Well done. Pink Molina has taught him a few things about it. When I talk to catchers, some of them will say that that one knee down technique actually, if the ball's right in front of you, can make it easier to block. You're in that sort of perfect. You're square to the baseball. The, where it really becomes an issue is if you have to move significantly side to side. You have less mobility side to side. And, and, and talking to Martin Maldonado, asking him the, the loss of weight. I think a lot had to do with that too it is understanding the pitching staff that he's in understanding the, the body of work that it takes to, to catch a whole year as he's getting older now he wants to catch 100 110 115 games and to be able to do that you got to be able to be agile and line on your feet when you're behind the plate for all those those games. Three two. He missed low ball four. Yonder was talking about the history of catching in Puerto Rico. Benito Santiago, one of the greatest arms of all time. Sandy Alomar Jr., six time All Star, just a great player. Uh, you could argue, I mean, right there with Johnny Bench, greatest catchers of all time. Pudge Rodriguez, Jorge Posada, only won four World Series rings. And then Yachty. You know what? All of those guys have one thing in common. And what's that? They're leaders of that clubhouse. They demand respect. They demand leadership. They, mean, they demand to win every single day. And when those guys put on a jersey, it, it just felt like they, they went to the same church in Puerto Rico. This is the way it is. This is how you're going to do it. And this is how you're going to kind of live the way of how to be a catcher in Puerto Rico. Well. Team Maldonado's team maybe was hoping that they could cut this game off before this ninth inning with the early termination rule. They didn't do that, so now they're having to play the top of the ninth inning. And a guy that they expect to be an important part of their bullpen, Emilio Pagan, is not looking particularly sharp. So we'll see. Two on, nobody out. This is the first official runner in scoring position for Nicaragua in the whole game. And it's not ideal for Molina, the Puerto Rican team right now and their, their bullpen stop right they don't want to they don't want to burn through another another guy but Pagan's command is not real sharp at the moment and when Pagan is struggling right there like that more than not he's a little bit too quick with his left shoulder he's kind of falling off to the first base side that's why you're seeing a lot of misses kind of more on the up and in style to to the right handed hitters Right back to Pagan, knocks it down. Look at this. They'll get the out at second, and the strong arm of Baez dug out of the dirt. Double play. A little soft liner. Really good throw right there to Baez. Great pick by Soto. All of a sudden now, Team Puerto Rico can end this. Nicaragua down to its final out. It's been an historic day for them. This is their first game that they've ever played as a country in the World Baseball Classic. Proud day for them. And their young starter was outstanding. They had the game tied in the middle innings, but Puerto Rico too much. Big swing and miss. Now, this feels like for Puerto Rico, it was just as, as much of a big game for them as it was for Nicaragua, right? It was, hey, we want to start off right. 1 0 is a lot better than 0 1. Particularly in this pool. Perez pinch hitting. Just outside. Nominato wanted it.
foot down to its final strike. The stadium is sensing it now. They're ready to party. One, two. Puerto Rico gets its first win in what it hopes will be a run to a championship in the World Baseball Classic. A long way to go, but a very nice start. The, the right path, the right step. That's what Puerto Rico has done today. 1 0. Oh. They played clean, no errors, 11 hits, 9 to 1 ball game. It looked a little dicey early on right there, but too much offense, too much defense, and just too much pitching. Marcus Stroman did a fantastic job. That outstanding bullpen by the Puerto Rican staff was phenomenal. And their leader, Yadio Molina, was on that first step the whole game. And the first thing you said there, clean game. I think the difference in this game, the biggest difference in this game, was the defense. Absolutely. When you look at Nicaragua and what they've done, yeah, they should be proud of what they've accomplished today, but they understand they gave just way too many outs on the field, and that led to that victory for Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico gets its first win. They'll play Venezuela tomorrow in this ultra tough Pool D in this World Baseball Classic. Coming up tonight, 7 Eastern, Dominican Republic starts its chase for a championship against a very talented team from Venezuela. For Yonder Alonso and our entire crew, this is Dave Fleming. We'll see you later tonight. Thanks for watching this presentation of the World Baseball Classic.